bed frame hardware came in the mail, which means I can make the bed. Um, it's going to be a twin. Twin mattresses are roughly 39 by 75, so this is quite a bit smaller than the last few beds I've made. But before I start, i got to deal with my crapola. Good grief. Every time I turn around, i got stuff in the way. I cleaned out my truck toolbox yesterday. I found stuff I hadn't seen in years. But i got to clean up before I get started. Okay, time, time to pick a species of what to build a bed with. I don't like go to Lumberyard and buy stuff. I'm going to build with what I have. Um, I have a lot of the pecan, which is this. This is just a little bit of spray lacquer on a pecan board. And it's, uh, it's up there. It would work. There's nothing wrong with that. I have tons of cypress. And it's okay, but it's a little bit of a country look. And um, my son's house is more formal, spartan doesn't really fit. I w I'm going to shy away from the cypress. This is number one southern yellow pine. It's wonderful to work with. It's straight as an arrow. There's no knots. Um, but it just doesn't finish well. It's never very pretty. It's the wood that this countertop, this tabletop is made out of. It's the wood that this table, this uh, outfeed table is made out of. Very stable. Wonderful stuff, but it's kind of ugly. And this is sycamore. Sycamore is really cool looking, I think. And I have a fair amount. And it's all crooked as a dog's hind leg. But a twin bed is fairly small at 39 by 75. And only two of the boards need to be 75. So if I use sycamore, which I have, which I don't use very often, I think I could get by with it. I think this would be a good project to use the sycamore. I'm going to drag a bunch of boards down from the attic. It's also very dry and uh, give them a quick plane just so I can see what I got to work with. So this is what's left of my pile of uh, sycamore. I've probably used two thirds of it over the years, just uh, never a whole lot in any one time. It might be dry, but it's still pretty doggone heavy. It's awkward uh, dealing with it on my hands and knees like this, trying to get something suitable to start planing. Usually when you start off a project with rough cut wood, you um, cut the boards down to size before you start playing them. It just makes everything easier. These boards were so rough and so dirty that I really couldn't tell what I was dealing with until I ran them through the planer a couple of times. And they're hard to run through the planer because they're not the same thickness from one end to the other. So it'll run good for 10 feet and then it'll stall out and I'll have to raise the cutter heads a couple of turns. And that means you got to run it through two more turns to catch up. But anyway, it's pretty physical, but but that's what you got to do to so you'll know what you got. And and once they're kind of halfway plain and halfway clean, then I can go through and mark out my boards and cut them, cut the keepers out of it, and throw the junk in the in the burn pile. Okay, I halfway planed down my first seven planks and I was able to find two pieces long enough to be the long stretchers, the 79 inches. You get one out of this board and one out of this board. And then the rest of the bed is much shorter, so I shouldn't have as big a problem finding straight ones like 40 inches long and shorter. Um, if I do, I have more in the attic, I'll plane some more. Okay, right now I have the two uh, long stringers they go the length of the bed they just need to be straight and that's all there is to it um, I have enough material to glue up uh, pairs the the foot legs are gonna be two foot tall so that's uh, one pair and two pairs I'll glue them together and once they're glued together they'll be chunky enough where I can run them through the joiner and square them up um, this is the end board at the bottom stringer and the top stringer at the end and the bottom stringer and the top stringer at the headboard and these four glue together to make the um, posts on the head. They're a little taller than the bottom ones. They're going to be three feet tall. So glue these up and um, proceed. Alright, the glue's been sitting overnight, so I'm going to unclamp these four legs. Two longer ones for the back and two shorter ones for the front of the bed. And I'm going to square these up with the joiner like 
I'm supposed to do all the time, but I don't always do it. But they're small enough where I can do it. Here I'm squaring up the legs with my joiner, planer. Um, first, I'm getting the one edge flat, just pressing down on the table, and passing it across the knives until it's straight from one end to the other. And then I flop it over 90 degrees and I keep that edge that I just straightened out tight to the fence. Not, not so much tight to the table, but tight to the fence. The fence is um, perfectly 90 degrees to the table, so it gets me a 90 degree corner, which is what joiner planers do. Now by placing the jointed uh, side of the board against the table saw fence, I can get a parallel cut that should also be straight. And then by placing the um, jointed flat surface into the um, thickness planer, I can get a surface on the other side that's parallel with the first side. So that gives me a it gives me stock that is uh, has two parallel sides, well four parallel sides and all the corners are right angles so just makes proceeding from this step so much easier when you can take the time and have the ability to do that. Time to do some ciphering here. Um, a twin mattress is 39 by 75 so if these are the long rails I'm gonna make them 76 inches long and that will give you a half inch between here and here to tuck the sheets or the blankets and a little more in the, in the middle part because this is going to step back and these don't need a tenon because they are fastened with bed hardware so they're just 76 inches long square on both ends now on the width the mattress is 39 inches wide so I'm shooting I'm putting this at um, 40 and a quarter that'll be 5 eighths on each side space between the mattress and the bed rails to be able to make up the bed so that gives me the location between this bed post and this bed post and I can actually physically measure that and it measures 37 and 5 eighths but I need a joint here so if I do a one inch tenon and a one inch tenon I need 39 and 5 eighths to cut all four of these ends. So there'll be a, a, a frame here, a frame at the top, and another pair on the headboard end. And they all need to be cut 76 inches and squared up and straightened up. And then I'm going to have to cut the, um, the mortises in the four posts, which are now totally square and cut the length. So each of these four uh, I prepped all the wood and they're gonna have a tenon on the end and they're gonna go into the side of the post. Um, they're gonna go in one inch and they're also gonna have a groove cut in the top of them for the fill on the both ends. So these are three inches and if I take a, make a half inch slot for the fill and leave a quarter down here, I'm at two and three quarters. And if I start like, um, I don't know, this is kind of arbitrary, about right there, up. They want it kind of low because he's a little fella. And all I need to do is cut a half inch uh, mortars in all the beds posts the other one's gonna be at the very top so that one's easier and let me see if I'm thinking this through correctly yeah so I'm gonna cut a mortise in the bottom of each leg and in the top of each leg and they're all gonna be exactly the same this is not gonna matter which way it faces if it's in the center okie doke I'm ready to cut my mortises and if I just had one or two to cut I would probably just uh, do it with a hammer and a chisel or maybe drill out the middle and then use a hammer and a chisel but since I have eight of them and they're all the same it makes sense for me to set up my little bench top mortiser which works good but it takes a while to set it up for one thing I had to drill two holes in my table to bolt it down because you do torque it pretty well set the depth with this little thing which is pretty straightforward but to locate the hole, you have to move the fence back and forth. And this is the lock 
lock for the fence and the old handle broke off and when you tighten it it moves so it can be really maddening you get it really close you tighten it it moves so you try to compensate for that and it moves the other way so that's why I don't use it if I just need one or two mortises it's just not worth the trouble but uh, for this I got it set up I did a bunch of practice drills and tapped it around back and forth until I got it drilling right in the center I'm gonna drill all my mortises so with the advantage of a good lever arm, lever arm, and this rack and pinion and this pretty stout um, frame on this machine, I'm shoving a hollow square chisel into the wood. And the little drill bit is in the middle removing the waste. So it um, works pretty good. It takes some force though. That's why you got to bolt it down to the table securely. It's not perfect, but it makes things pretty accurate. All done. It took less time to chop the mortises than it did to set the machine up. But even though I was really careful, it's still not right. This side is closer to this side than this side. And I realized that after I drilled the first one. So I've marked them and drilled pairs. They're opposites. So when I go to plow for the inset, I just need to match the um, the hole and then they'll line up. If I had one on one side and one on the other side, it wouldn't match, but they should match up okay. And now I'll take my mortise down and store it for another year probably before I use it again. So it's time to cut the tenon on the boards that go from side to side. And they're all going to be the same in the beginning. They're all going to have a notch one inch deep like that and like that um, I'm gonna do this with the table saw it looks like maybe a little more than a saw blade on each side and then so the top one has a notch like this the bottom one has a similar notch I don't know if they're the same measurement or not but we'll find out but for, the, for starters all of them will have that cheek cut and they'll all be the same one inch deep and uh, whatever it does. I'll take some <clears throat> I'll take a scrap board and play with it until I get a cut that looks good. So the tenons and the mortises are all complete. I'm ready to route the dado where the fill will be. And a couple ways to do that. I could do it on the table saw with a dado blade. And I've got a big old dado blade, but it's kind of scary. So I think I'm going to do it with a router. Probably a dull bit. Make a lot of noise and a lot of smoke, but hopefully some chips also. This is the simplest router setup ever. Now that I have a flat top on my bench. I uh, just clamp the board, clamp the leg, and I put the router bit in the mortise and tell it fit right and then scribe the outside of the router. I guess you can see that. Set it on both sides and clamp the board to the pencil marks and that should be all I need.
So for the rails, I did pretty much the same thing, except I clamped a board to the rail to give the router more, to, uh, so it wouldn't be so wobbly out here where it stuck out. But, uh, other than that, just uh, put it there, marked it, clamp the guide, and run the router through there. Coming out pretty good. I had two whoopses while I was doing this. One, the clamps holding the straight edge slipped, and the router pushed its way all the way out there, which is pretty ugly. So I'll glue, I'm going to cut this off and glue it back solid with a piece of wood and cut it again tomorrow. And another one which is kind of disappointing is this little chip flew off right at the very end. But I found it. And I can put it back. So I'll have to mix me up a little bit of epoxy because I won't be able to clamp it. Put that back. So two steps forward, three steps backwards. Or something like that. But yesterday I set a new record on mistakes per hour. Um, this was one of them. This is where the clamp slipped and the router routed off the edge of the board. So I had a piece glued on there. I'm going to take the clamps off, re-square it, and reroute and see how it goes. So I ran the board through the table saw to cut the patch off flush here. And then I ran it through the planer to bring this back flush. Now I'm going to go back to the router and try again to try to get that uh, groove down the middle correctly. Second time is the charm. I got it right this time. Okay, our two frames are roughly complete and everything fits and the, um, the joint for the inlay, everything lines up pretty reasonable. So it's almost time to take it apart and sand it before I glue it together. But before I do that, I want to put these on the legs. Um, this is the hardware where the long rail attaches to the leg. And this is a little different, but we want to put two of them on each leg because Willie is a little bitty and worried about him falling out of bed. So we we're going to put one down low, which will look kind of goofy but it'll be for until he gets a little bigger and then we'll put one at the normal height. So I gotta figure out those two heights, what they should be. And then because I have to do eight of them, I'll go ahead and make a router template and I'll route out the, um, these little deals. And then I have to route out the end grain of the rails for this piece. That'd be even a little more tricky. But. One of my mini mess ups yesterday was I cut the rails uh, like four and a quarter just because I thought that would look good with the proportions of the bed and I forgot to take into account that this hardware is like four and an eighth which means it just wasn't going to be enough meat left to embed this in the end grain so I glued the board onto my two rails and now I can cut it into back in half and I think I'm going to make the rails maybe uh, maybe five inches I've got Two rips five inches, I replane them and get these straight. It's about time I bought a new router bit. And it's Christmas in March, I bought a new router to put the router bit in. Okay, I got the four bed posts and I got the bottom down. On all four, this would be a good opportunity for me to really screw this up, so I'm trying to be extra careful. Okay, they're all bottom side this way. And I took a scrap of the uh, stringer, stretcher, the board that goes long ways. This is it. So, I'm going to put one here close to the floor. This is for when Willie is a little bitty. In case he rolls out, he'll only be eight inches off the floor. And in a year or so, when he's more of a toddler, we can put it to a normal height here. So I'm going to put two of these on each one of the posts. And they, they're going to be centered where the um, stretcher is going to go. And it's really not that critical where they go as long as they're all the same. They're going to go here and here. And 
Okay, so I'm going to transfer that mark over. It'll be here. And here. And here. So this new router is a plunge router, which means that the router goes up and down on a couple of rails and you can set the depth of cut. So for a job like this, it's perfect. It's replacing my old plunge router, which the chuck messed up on. Still runs perfectly, but I can't get parts for the chuck anymore. So it'll go in the garbage and uh, I have a new one and it uh, works very well, especially with a sharp bit. It's amazing what a sharp bit will do. Then I came back and did them all over again with the fence adjusted a little bit to make my half inch bit cut a 5 8 slot. Okay, so I took all the little mortises and chiseled the end square and did a test fit and got the hardware fitting in all eight holes. So now comes a lot of sanding and I won't record that because it's boring as heck and we'll start putting this stuff together. So sanded to 150 grit and a couple of shots of lacquer, spray can lacquer just to protect the wood from the glue. Um, this is a dry run. Everything fits pretty good. Square with the framing square and the top piece will fit in. So I'm going to glue the bottom piece. And then I'm going to work on the infill. And I don't even know what I'm going to do with it yet. All, other than it's got to be a half inch thick. So I'm going to do, um, this is the, the, the tailboard, the lower one. I'm going to glue this. I'm going to glue the bottom of the, of the headboard. And then I'm going to have to decide what to do with filling in the middle. I'm going to use epoxy because my joints are less than stellar and epoxy is uh, a wood butcher's best friend.